I see in Scripture God's calling. I, I see three calls. There's a call to salvation. There's a call to service. And finally, there's a call home. Come on home. Uh, but we're going to talk this morning about the salvation and the service in particular. We're going to talk about, before we're called home, what he has in mind for us as part of that calling. We, we're first called to salvation. We're chosen for salvation. We're called to salvation. I was, I've been, I was thrilled at looking up some of the verses that speak of that. Let me share a few with you. Isaiah 55, 1 says, Ho! It says ho. I like that word. Ho! It's getting our attention. Hey, hey you, ho! <laughs> Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. That's a call of God. Jesus says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Then he goes on to say what's going to happen when, he, when we do drink. We may drink a cup, but there's going to be a whole lot more flowing out of us. Rivers of living water. <clears throat> God has a, a way of multiplying what we take in and coming out in a whole much bigger way. Aren't you grateful for that? Revelation twenty two seventeen 17 say, The Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes to take the water of life without cost come. Romans ten twelve says, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is the Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. God has a call to salvation. And that call is universal. That call is for every person on the face of the earth. Amen? He also has a call to service. That once we've heeded the first call, the call to salvation... Then he has a job for us to do. You know, I, I think of the word fellowship. And in Greek, we understand that to mean or to be koinonia. Okay? But even that word is, is, is more powerful than fellowship because it means a joint participation in. It means a partnership. It means a sharing in. So we see that the Lord... When he calls us to salvation and then calls us to service, he wants not just to sit down and talk with us, so that's, that's part of it, but he also wants then to, to get up and, and do some things together. He wants to partner with his people. Amen? Now, it, sometimes it's hard to understand that, isn't it? I mean, God wants to use me? Yeah. I mean, it's like he said, I want you. And we're, going, and we're looking behind us. You know. uh, I mean, this one over here. <laughs> no, you, you. <laughs> Sister Lipsy, you, you're the one. Stop looking around you. It, you, <laughs> I want you. I want to use you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I was just, the Bible says you are a chosen race. I don't know if, if we really caught the significance of that in our lives. At least we don't think about it in, on a regular basis. But I think we need to. God started with Abraham and chose him. In the New Testament, we see him. You know, the purpose of choosing Abraham is so that a Messiah could come forth from him, that the rest of the world would be blessed. But as Jesus came to the earth, he chose, he started his church. Jesus is the one who started his church. And he started with 12 disciples or apostles, we call them. He says, I choose you guys. I choose you and you and you and you. But it didn't stop with them. It expanded that on the day, on, 
there was 120 in the upper room that he had chosen. But on the day of Pentecost, there was thousands that were swept in to the choosing side to be on his team. Amen? And then from there, through the ages, through the years, he's added this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. You know, sometimes, oh, praise the Lord, entire families are saved and brought in. But for most of the, the, the time, it's one by one. They come into the kingdom. One by one. Maybe it's the husband, then the wife, then the kids. But one by one, they come in. We don't, we're not, we don't come into the kingdom because our mother was a Christian. We, have, we, there, we come because we, it, there's no salvation by heritage. <laughs> Passing it on. Now, now, we can be influenced, but there comes a point where we have to heed the call. So one by one. But in other words, being a chosen race is like God saying, I want you on my team. Now, I think we all know the feeling of, has anybody ever been rejected from a, a team or playing on a team? You know that, that feeling? <laughs> Maybe some of you never. You're always, you're, you're such, so good. <laughs> but I think probably all of us have been rejected from a team. But here's, here's God saying, I want you on my team. Now, does that excite you? What if, uh, this is the picture that the Lord gave me. What if Jim Trussell came up to you and says, hey, listen, maybe he's calling you on the phone, you know. He says, hey, I want you on my team. Next week, you need to suit up and come out to practice Monday morning. You're on the team. Against USC, we're playing and we need you. Now, what would you do? You, you might say, I think he's got the wrong guy. <laughs> or, or you can respond to the call, you know. So, some of us, we're like this. God says, I want you on my team. And we say, yeah, I guess so. But no, what should our response be? You want me? Woo! Yeah, all right! <laughs> if Jim Trussell called you to be on the team, and he was the one who was judging your ability, not you. I mean, you can say, oh, I'm not worthy of it. But if he's judging your ability, say, you got what 